And the third metric that I talk about, the third segment I talk about is quality. So, uh, the, first we looked at safety, we looked at production. The third aspect as I look at is the quality of paper. As you know, quality of paper can mean different things to different people, but in the technical jargon, quality of paper would mean the grammage, the moisture, the thickness, or the caliper and the ash content of paper. It's also sometimes the color of paper or it's sometimes the gloss of paper, the brightness of paper. So how does steam and condensate systems affect quality of paper? As you know, the drying is an extremely sensitive process and if the drying process is not controlled very well, paper formation can be severely affected and it can affect several properties. So in my opinion, the best practice to get good quality paper is to have uniform even drying as per the bell shaped curve that is normally recommended for paper drying. Yeah. So how does the steam and condensate system uh, adopt the best practice that can produce good quality paper? So in terms of steam and condensate systems, the best practice is to actually have dryers that can be divided into groups and these groups are then operated in a certain thermal profile. Yeah? And if that is achieved very well, one can achieve a good formation of paper and as well as it can also result in good brightness properties. Uh, you all heard of the machine glaze cylinder, the MG cylinder. Now this MG cylinder is, is sitting right between two dry sections and therefore ach achieving the right moisture before the MG is so important in the craft making that it's, it's going to impo impact the properties of, of, of glaze on, on machines. So therefore the right steam pressure to be used, the right moisture to be achieved before the cylinder is so important. So the best practice is to ensure that steam pressures are controlled in an appropriate way using control valves and automation either PLCs or controllers uh, such that you get the right temperature profile along the machine direction. So that becomes a best practice and many machines in India are adopting this very very uh, fast and it's a good sign of, of things to come. Almost every machine now in India is tending to go for controls and automation uh, to control steam pressure, differential pressure and level in their machines. So the best practice number two I talked about for quality is to ensure that you use spoiler bars. Now typically what we have found is that people are having temperature variations in the cross direction along the dryer width. The paper is produced on a dryer and, and the drying of paper can get affected if the temperature of the dryer is not uniform. So how does one make temperature of the paper uniform? How does one make temperature of the dryer uniform? And that is done by you know breaking up the film of condensate you get not just get a higher drying rate but you also get a uniform temperature along the length. The right type of siphon shoe is also very important to get a uniform cross section along the machine length. The use of zonal PV boxes external to the dryer is another technology or the best practice that can be used by machines to get uniform uh, temperature profiles along the, the, the length of the dryer. So these are some of the best practices as applied to steam and condensate systems uh, as applied to uh, quality aspect. There is one more aspect that comes from the hood and PV system. The hood and pocket ventilation system as I mentioned to you earlier is providing a controlled and uniform environment around the machine. Yeah? That means from lot to lot and from grade to grade the ambient humidity inside the machine remains constant and that means that the drying rate and the drying environment is constant and that really provides consistency in drying. And if one achieves consistency in drying then one can definitely be assured of good drying rates and, and uniform drying rates from time to time and therefore one sees minimum variations in, in quality of paper that is produced of such machines. So therefore the best practice here is that if you have to improve the quality of paper, if you have to improve the production of paper and the safety of the paper making itself, the hood and pocket ventilation system is, is really a best practice that, is, that needs to be scaled across Indian paper machines. This is actually now happening in India. However, I believe that there is a lot of opportunity and potential for Indian machines to adopt this technology. Uh, of course, Indian suppliers need to really make sure that these hoods are cost effective and they are really, you know, uh, up, what you call uh, affordable to the, to the large number of mills that are there in India. So coming back to the best practice uh, of, of quality uh, in terms of how does one really make good quality, good GSM paper and save money is to implement what is known as the quality 
quality control system. Now, this is not a very new technology that's been there. In, it's been there for many years in India and abroad. Uh, however, its adaptability has not happened for many years for very many reasons. Maybe it's affordability or maybe it's just the, the maintenance costs are too high and, and the use of the quality control system will ensure that you are able to maintain a cross-directional profile along, along the width of the dryer in a very uniform way. So, just imagine that you are able to maintain the right GSM and the right moisture value. The savings not just come from steam but it also comes from fiber. So, you can use less fiber and maintain the right moisture and save steam. So, this it has got a two pronged benefit which can really impact quality of paper. So, use of the quality control system along with the CD actuation system uh, is the best practice that can be uh, implemented for paper making.